Hi, this is Barb Rademacher, your stalwart math professor, and I just wanted to show you something. This is an app out on the internet, and it's designed to show you the secant line. Now what this is, is here's a, here's a point on the x-axis, and it's, I, I chose the easiest I could think of, and so this point clearly is x equals zero, right? Right at the intersection there of the x and the y axis. And then I chose another x coordinate, x equals one, and when you go up to the curve, well there, there's its uh, point, and its y coordinate appears to be uh, 0.85, I think. So, here we have x equals 0 and its y coordinate, which is 0, and x equals 1 and its y coordinate, which is 0.85, and, and this distance between the two x coordinates is called h. <clears throat> and clearly in this case, h equals 1. So, that, I mean, that clearly is the distance between the two x coordinates of the two points that are colored in here. One is blue, one is green. Okay, now, so h is 1, but what if h got smaller? Like, for instance, what if h became 0.8, its distance was 0.8 rather than 1. That would pull this point along the curve that way. So now here, here's 0.8. H, if h is 0.8, then from 0 to 0.8 is h. And then the y coordinate would be whatever whatever that is, uh, 0.75. Now notice is that it, if h keeps getting smaller, say it's 0.6 now, that would move this point to 0.6. And notice how the two points are getting closer and closer together. And not only that, but this, cr this red line is getting closer and closer to being on top of the curve. Now suppose h gets smaller and h is 0.2. Now suppose h is, I think 0.1, I'm not sure. But notice that as h gets smaller and smaller, the two points get closer and closer together. And if you've had economics, what we're getting very cl close to is the margin. The marginal cost or the marginal profit, the margin this, the margin that. That's what a margin is. It's the instantaneous rate of change. All right. Now, you probably won't know what this is for a while. It's a very important concept in calculus. We are going to start learning about this because we're going to do problems called difference quotient problems. And I wanted to show you that they're not just trivial algebraic exercises. What we're dealing here with here is the slope of a line, and the slope of a line is not just the tilt of a line, it's the instantaneous rate of change. Uh, and the rate of change is how fast are you moving, uh, how much are you spending, how much gas are you using. Rate of change is all important. So when you see the difference quotient, you're going to maybe understand a little better exactly what it is we're doing. Okay, so here we are. We're going to work a couple of difference quotient problems. You'll be given a function like f of x equals 7x plus 2. That's not hard. Now, we're going to find f of x plus h. 
which is really just the second x coordinate. So f of that second x coordinate is going to be 7 times x plus h plus 2, which is going to be 7x plus 7h plus 2. Now this is what we have to find. The quotient, you know, is something that is divided. f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So if you take this in steps, it's not hard. f of x plus h, we just found out, is 7x plus 7h plus 2. And if we subtract f of x, that's 7x plus 2. So I'll put that in parentheses. Now the whole thing's going to go over h, but wait until you've worked out the top. All right, we're going to, for those who want to be snooty, the numerator, f at 7x plus 7h plus 2 minus 7x minus 2 over h. Now notice that 7x minus 7x is 0. 2 minus 2 is 0. We're going to be left with 7h over h. The h's are going to cancel. And so what our difference quotient s simplifies to is 7, just 7. OK, now they're not all that easy, but they can be not all that difficult. Let's take a look at the next one. Same. Now, this one's going to be more interesting. Thank goodness. I don't want to die of boredom. And I don't want you to die of boredom. Okay. Now, our f of x is x squared minus 2. So our f of x plus h is going to be x plus h squared minus 2. Now, don't be fooled. x plus h quantity squared is x plus h times x plus h. You're going to have to FOIL those guys. And then at the very end, subtract 2. So you're going to have x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus 2. Now, before we find the whole quotient, let's go ahead and say, OK, well, what is f of x plus h minus f of x? Well, f of x plus h is right here. It's x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus 2. And then we're going to subtract, parentheses, x squared minus 2, which is the original f of x. So that will give us x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus 2 minus x squared plus 2. Now, the 2 minus 2 cancel each other out, and the x squared minus x squared cancel each other out. So we're left with 2hx <coughs> plus h squared. And that's what f of, f of x plus h minus f of x equals. It equals 
2HX plus H square. Now, what we're looking for in the difference quotient is F of X plus H minus F of X over H. Well, we've already taken F of X plus H minus F of X. It's 2HX plus H square over H. Hey, if we make ourselves two fractions here, we'll have 2HX over H plus H square over H. We can simplify. We'll be left with 2X. This simplifies to just H. And so there you have it. Now in calculus, you'll look at this. You'll look at the H getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it's not even there anymore. Um, but you're not in calculus yet. So the answer we're looking for is 2X plus H. And sorry I got a little low there, but I brought it back up. Okay, talk to you later.